Welcome. This is a short introduction to the formalism of mixed quantum states, and uh, I will conclude also on something on state tomography. I suppose that you know what is a pure quantum state, and so let us start with something that you should know, namely that the average value of an operator on a pure state is estimated in quantum theory by this expression. So this is A on psi. Now, we can consider the situation where the source is producing sometimes a state psi 1, sometimes a state psi 2. So the source produces psi 1 with a frequency or probability p1 and psi 2 with probability p2, which is of course 1 minus p1. If for such a source, what would be the average value of the operator A? You can pause the video and think for a couple of seconds, and I'll give you the answer. The answer is obviously p1. With this frequency, we will see the average due to state psi 1, and with the other frequency, we see the average due to state psi 2. So, written explicitly is Now, it seems that we are a bit stuck here, that we don't know where to continue. Is that a way of simplifying this formula? But there is a way. And the way, I'm going to do it on the other half of the tape, the of the board, is the following uh, correspondence. Psi A Psi can also be written as the trace of the projector of Psi times the operator A. Okay, let me prove this formula for you. I start from here. This trace is equal to sum over any basis of phi k psi psi a phi k. And now, you know that this result will be independent of the basis. In particular, one thing I can do is to choose a basis in which psi is an element. Let's say it's phi 1. And of course, all the other states will be orthogonal to psi. In this case, the result would be, as announced, where well, there will be psi, 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 a, psi, plus zero times all the others. And this is one. So we have proved that indeed this expression is equal to that. So let us go back here. I can write this one now as p1 trace of a projector on one. I will use the p1 as, sorry, maybe let's use a different notation just for clarity. I will use phi1 maybe for the projector plus p2 trace on a phi2. And now the trace is linear. So we can rearrange this expression as trace of a times rho with rho equal phi1 p1 psi1 psi1 plus p2 psi2 psi2. And now this object is a mathematical object that describes all the statistics that we can get on our system in the case where the source has this mixed characterization. Sometimes one state, sometimes another state. So this is a mixed state. So here we have the mixed state that we have just constructed. It's pretty clear how to generalize this construction if there are more than two possibilities. So a generic mixed state would be written sum over k, pk, psi k, psi k, where sum over k, pk is equal to 1, and all the pk's are positive. And these states don't need necessarily to be orthogonal. This state can be any state. We have not requested that this two of orthogonal. It can be on any different state. I was going to give now a couple of examples and an important remark. As an example, let me take a case where a source of 
spins one half, produces half of the time the spin up and half of the time the spin down. So in this case, the mixed state would be one half spin up plus one half spin down. Now this is an interesting result because you know that these two projectors span the whole vector space. Therefore, in fact, this state is equal to one half times gain entity. And interestingly, here there is an information about the direction. This is up along the z direction, or it could be up along the x direction, and this is down in the same direction. But when you look at the final mixture, there is no more information about the direction. It's really like this. So if you take the mixture of two spin up and down, sorry, one spin up or down with the same weight along any direction, the result is always the same. But this is the state. So this is an important remark that if I give you the states and their probability, you can obviously, with this formula, construct uniquely a matrix row. But if I give you the matrix row, you cannot reconstruct uniquely the ensemble from which it comes. There can be many. And in fact, there are always many unless the state is pure. This is an important remark. So when you do calculations in quantum mechanics, the result cannot depend on which of these ensembles you use. It must depend only on the state, on the density matrix. And now, the other remark I want to make at this level, let me erase this point. This is pretty obvious, but I really want to stress it, is that this is extremely different from the pure state that would be like this. In many elementary courses, this state is described as, oh, half of the time the spin is up and half of the time the spin is down. But this description is inappropriate. What I just said is the description of this state. This state is a pure state. In fact, if this is up along the z direction, this state would be up, or let's say up along the x direction. So this is a state with very well defined properties along the x direction, simply doesn't have very well defined property along z. This is a state that doesn't have very well defined property in any direction. So please keep in mind the difference between a mixed state and a pure state that can be written as superposition in a different basis. Now that we understood where these mixed states come from and how to construct them from an ensemble, there is in fact an abstract way of listing the properties that an operator must satisfy in order to be a mixed state. So, rho is a valid mixed state if and only if three properties hold. The first property is that the operator must be Hermitian. So rho dagger is equal to rho. The second property is that the trace of rho must be equal to one. The third property that can be phrased in different ways is usually written that rho square is smaller than rho. These three properties have a clear interpretation in terms of the probabilities of the mixture. So this one means that the elements in the diagonal basis are real numbers. So that rho has a decomposition, sum over k, pk, phi k, phi k, where now the phi k's are orthogonal. And this one tells me that pk are real. This one tells that sum over pk is equal to 1. And this one says that sum of pk squared is smaller than 1, which combined with all these things essentially means that the pk's are all positive. And this is what you would like for probabilities. These three properties 
have enough to define a mixed state. So now I want to just go through a very special case that is nothing new, but is worth to is worth mentioning it explicitly, and it's the case of how to compute probabilities with a mixed state. You know that for, for pure state, the probability of finding the state phi given that I have the state psi is given by psi phi squared. Now, in order to bring this to a situation where I can use the uh, formalism of mixed states, let me just open it up. So this is this times the conjugate, and the conjugate, as you know, is the Brian the cat reversed. So I can write this as psi phi times phi psi, which I can also write now. You, you recognize here the projector on phi. So this is psi projector on phi psi. And now here you see immediately how to generalize the probability for a mixed state. So now the probability of getting the outcome associated to the state phi, given that I have the mixed state rho, will be equal to the trace of rho times the projector of phi. There's nothing really new again here. This is just an application of the formula that we had before with A here, but it's worth pointing it out so that you remember how to compute probabilities with mixed states. Finally, I want to mention this very important notion of state tomography or the state reconstruction. So we know that almost by definition of state, if we have many copies of a state, and copies, we can compute all the possible statistics. So really so for all five. That's the definition of state. It allows you to compute the probability of having that particular physical problem. What is not often stressed, but should also be more or less obvious once you think about it, is that the opposite is also true. If I give you all the statistics, so I observe some values that we call it T phi. And I know all these for all phi. Then, from this set of numerical values, one can reconstruct the state. In this sense, it's called state reconstruction. Or, more frequently, tomography, uh, for some reason. It comes from Greek, it means uh, image reconstruction drawing the image, and uh, uh, in fact what I said is even exaggerated. You don't need to know all the statistics on all the states in order to reconstruct the state. You should know a few. Uh, for instance, let me take, give the example of a two-level system. You might have learned in uh, quantum mechanics 1 or anywhere else that any state is determined by what's called the block vector. So the density matrix is always represented like this. This meaning and z sigma z. And the properties are that the, the length of this vector n is smaller or equal than 1 with equality 1 if and only if the state is pure. So you see that if I can reconstruct nx, ny, and nz, I can certainly reconstruct the state. And now, what is nx? Again, you can look into your notes, and you will find that nx is nothing else than the trace of rho times sigma x. This is the trace of rho times, sorry, rho sigma y, and this is trace of rho sigma z. It's not difficult to prove it even from the expression of rho. This means what? 
It means that if I give you the average value of sigma x, the average value of sigma y, and the average value of sigma z, you know exactly and uniquely which is the state. This is analog to the idea of sampling a public distribution. You have a, a die, you throw it many times, and after some time you can reconstruct the probability of finding one, the probability of finding two, and so on, up to the probability of finding six. The difference with quantum is that since some uh, measurements do not commute, they are incompatible, you cannot reconstruct only one probability distribution, you have to reconstruct a few, and here in particular you would have to reconstruct the one of x, the one of y, and the one of z. Anyway, the important message of this section is just to say that not only the state gives you access to all the probabilities, but also the reverse is true. All the probabilities or a suitable subset of them gives you direct information about the state. Thank you for your attention. I hope you learned something during this more tutorial.